Well, um, welcome. Uh, this is the October 20th, 2015 meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission and also the counselor for Ward 3. Uh, I'll begin by announcing the audio and video recording of the meeting. And let's begin, as we always do, by introducing ourselves to the public, starting with our chief of police. I'm the chief of police. Okay. I'm I'm Ned Humphrey, Public Works. Ann Brooks, Planning Board. Mr. Burnett, Citizen. Gary Hartwell, Citizen. Dave Palmer, Director of Central Services. Okay, but note the presence of a quorum, so we'll begin with the meeting. Uh, we begin every meeting, we're, we're going to change the order a little bit for the benefit of some people who have come here, but we begin every meeting with general public comment. So if there's not an agenda item further down on the agenda that you're here to comment on and you'd like to comment on any subject generally, um, now is a good time to do it. Um, is there anyone who'd like to speak to Sure, please. Um, if, if you say your name and address for the record, and we generally try to keep it to about three minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. My name's Ann Wassell. Um, I live at 32 Pine Street on the right side um, in Florence. And I'm here today to um, bring up a, sort of an ongoing issue on Pine Street about, um, well, there's always the issue of volume of traffic and the speed of traffic on Pine Street. But um, in particular, I am uh, here sort of like groundwork for people about um, the amount of parking on Pine Street also. And um, our neighborhood has been concerned about the overflow parking that we get from the 10 Main Street building, which is a medical building I think that is owned by Floyd Dickinson and rented out to, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the, who is sort of the overall manager of it. But anyway, um, I know that there's been an issue before that Middle Street had brought up about the amount of parking that they were getting, but Pine Street is also getting um, a large quantity of parking on our street from that building. Um, we happen to live right at the intersection of Chestnut and Pine Street, which is um, a very difficult intersection anyway. And we now have parking that is sort of on uh, both sides of Pine Street. So as people are coming around that corner and there's a crosswalk there, they're parking on both sides of the crosswalk. So um, it's a safety issue for us. We also end up having people that are parking there that are using the 10 Main Street building, um, smoking in front of you know our residences. There's been a lot of cigarette butts and litter that goes along with it. Um, so what we really want to address is, is the lack of parking for that 10 Main Street building. And that we would really like them to um, find an alternative parking situation for their customers that doesn't include our residential neighborhood becoming their parking lot. Um, when we converted our house to a two-family house a number of years ago, it was made very clear to us when we were before the zoning and zoning and the planning and all that we had to have enough parking spaces in our driveway to accommodate the residents in our house. And we would like to see the business community um, held to the same standards for that. Um, so I have spoken to Ryan and emailed him before, and we are going to be on the agenda for next month but I would um, like to just sort of set this groundwork to know that we'll be back and uh, people could pay attention, drive by, <laughs> look at the parking, particularly in the morning, it's a problem. Um, we would appreciate it. I appreciate your public comment. Thank you for the preview of our, our next okay. meeting. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to provide public comment? Any subject? Okay. Well, seeing none, we'll launch into our agenda. Um, I think there are many people from Cardinal Way here today. So, unless uh, any judges from the commission, I'd like to move up item seven, um, which is the traffic comment request for Cardinal Way, received on August 28, 2015. We have several people to speak here, um, but we have uh, Councilor Marion Lavarge in Ward 6. Councilor, I don't know if you'd like to. Uh, go first. Or sure. Ever thank you, Councillor. Um, I want to thank the Parking and Transportation Commission for placing us on the agenda. We have a serious problem on Cardinal Way, and a lot of it is due to 
the deplorable condition that Hertzberg Road is in, the tremendous amount of potholes, and people, many people have come to me to say they will not drive on it because of the cost of repairs to their cars. Also because of the construction of Lawrence Road and Ryan Road, people now are accessing through Ryan Road using the side streets and coming into Cardinal Way onto West Stanton Road. We have a problem, a serious problem. The amount of speeding that is occurring on Cardinal Way is out of hand and out of control. I have received a call from attorney Tom Miranda, who lives on Cardinal Way, asking for help. I sent an email to our new chief, Jody Casper. She immediately got in contact with Tom Miranda. I have to say that we have a resident in Cardinal Way who applied for traffic calming on Cardinal Way. But there was a little mix-up. She didn't realize that she had to get the signatures by herself. Mm -hmm. So she has done her job of getting the signatures. I think there was 23 signatures on the petition. Plus, because of it being a holiday weekend, she was able to get three more of what she has this evening, and she'd like to hand those in. And one of them is from attorney John Miranda and his wife and another resident. Way back, there's a little history here. Way back in 2008, I received a call from a parent of a little child, six years old, seven years old, who was very concerned about the turtles on Cardinal Way and the amount of speeding then that was occurring. I went and met the little girl, and she was unbelievable. She was an inspiration to me as a city councilor, and I called her our little activist. I called Ned Huntley, and I told Ned Huntley that he had to meet this little girl. And this is a picture from way back from 2008, and I'd like you to give it back to me, please, because it's precious. Ned Huntley said, Counselor, I'll meet you the next day. And I want to thank Ned for doing that, because he really opened up that little girl's heart to know that an employee from the city, who she wanted there in her consulate, to help save the turtles. She took Ned and I on a site visit of the area of where the turtles were dying. And he was unbelievable, Ned, and I won't forget what you did for that little girl. It's precious. He actually showed her what they could do to try to eliminate the turtles, which she would tell Ned and I, they're squashed all the time. And that was happening. Ned did have his department come over, and he'll probably talk about that after, on what they implemented to try to help this little girl out. Anyways, they, Ned had mentioned to them about doing signs, whatever, to slow people down. They did do that, and they did notice that there was a little bit of a decrease of speeding occurring, and a little bit less of turtles dying. I had not heard anything about turtles dying until one of my residents, Barry Roth, came to city council with a terrible, terrible picture of a turtle. Uh, I'm a wildlife act activist, deer, everything on my ward, and that really upset me. But the biggest thing right now is the amount of speeding occurring on Cardinal Way. Because of the two curves that are at Cardinal Way, I have many, many children, many children, who play ball in front of their homes, basketball, with their, their, their loop and all, and they do their thing, and sometimes the ball goes out in the road. Yes, I've been told we have a sidewalk. That does not mean just because we have a sidewalk that our children or our walkers and our dog walkers are going to be safe. When you have traffic that has increased considerably, I mean considerably, and it's something that I am taking very, very seriously. And I think today you will hear one of my residents about 
the concerns everybody has on Cardinal Way. I think by installing speed bumps is the right way to go. I also feel by slowing the speed of traffic is the best way to save wildlife. And I will always will say that. Slow it down and the wildlife possibly will be safe. But I need to look at the many, many children, dog walkers, bicyclists coming around the curves. I do know that our new chief of police, Jody Casper, did have the speed trailer applied on Cardinal Way. I received a call on Columbus Day weekend. It was un unoperable, and it was still unoperable as of yesterday. When the mayor had a hearing on the pilot program, I brought it to the officer's attention. But you know, it's not working. But I don't know what has come out of having the trailer there when it was operable. But I am asking the departments, the Department of Public Works, our police department, and Transportation and Commission to please look at this very, very carefully. Because I was also told by attorney Tom Miranda on that Friday when he called me, he drove up and there was an ambulance and there was a child's bicycle that was on the ground. So please take a look at this petition and please start the traffic coming as soon as possible so we can all keep all our residents and all our children safe and our bicyclists and our dog walkers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor. Are, are there any questions for Councilor Large before we move on to, to other residents? Um, I'd like to open it up to any other resident of Cardinal Way who would like to speak on the application. Hello, everyone. So my name is Erica Frank, and I live at 217 Cardinal Way, and I'm the person that went around and got all the signatures. Um, and I can tell you that everybody, uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the folks were like, I, give me the paper, let me sign. They were, everybody's been really worried. Um, and I certainly concur with everything that um, Marianne has said, but I just want to reiterate that um, we have over 44 children on our street. All, you know, most of them elementary school, middle school. Um, so there are lots of kids out all the time. And um, I've lived on the block from pretty much from the very beginning. I think we were like the third house that was built. And although all the things that I agree with Marianne about issues on Bird's Pit and all that, and I too don't like going down Bird's Pit for that same reason, but this issue has been going on ever since our street opened up. And I do have, we have some other residents here from Cardinal Way, and um, they, I'm sure, can attest to that, that, that is, it's been happening ever since the, the street opened because you can get in from both sides and it's been a cut through. For me, and I think for most of the people on my block, Though we have these curves that I believe were put in to, to calm the traffic, but it has not worked. The street is really narrow, and those there are three curves that are incredibly difficult to see around. And because we don't have um, a speed limit on our street, I understand that it, it, that it, you, it is a 30 mile an hour speed limit. You should try going up 30 miles an hour on our road is super fast and going around those curves is crazy. So I have, uh, I know for sure that there was one accident uh, several years ago. Many mailboxes have been knocked down. Um, somebody went up on this, onto someone's lawn after hitting the mailbox and that there's one particular curve that's really bad. Um, and that mailbox I know two or three times had been knocked over because people were going too fast. So, um, I just also wanted to point out that I do have um, Mr. Miranda and his partner's signature on this page that I will give you. He also um, today had mentioned to me, he had called and said that he had a letter that he wanted to submit, but I wasn't, I was at work all day, so I wasn't able to get it. Is that something that I can submit at a later date to you? We actually received a copy and the commissioners oh, have copies. Oh, okay, okay. Um, happy to take I the actually results. don't even know what the letter says, but. Um, and I just also wanted to point out the signatures that I got, most, uh, most of them 
represent the household, not just one person. So there would be twice as many signatures. I just thought per household made sense, and everybody concurred that I talked with. So it really does represent almost every household, and I can tell you there are two more houses that I wasn't able to get because I did it over the Columbus Day weekend, and it, people weren't around, but I know for sure that two other families would have signed um, if, if I had a chance to get them. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Um, one no. What's that? One said no. Oh, right. There was, that's true, there was one, uh, one household that said no, and I just wrote that on the form. They didn't sign it, but it was a verbal no that I got from them. Um, there are a lot, Judy is here today from our street, um, and I know there were other people that wanted to come, but this is a really hard time to, for people to come, and I know that they wanted to do that, so I don't know in the future, once as we continue with this, we can try to get some people, and I don't know if there are other hours that this happens, but um, I think other people definitely wanted to be there. But it, it has been an issue, as I said, ever since that um, our street was constructed, and for me, um, what is most worrisome and are those curves because they, you and because of the, the narrowness of the road, there are points that you cannot see. There are blind spots and you can't see the other person coming from the other direction. And if you're going fast, it's really um, it's treacherous. So. Okay. Well, any questions for Ms. Brown? Thank you. I, I would say this might be a good time to just comment on the process generally, since you bring up future meetings. And feel free to. Should I give that to you? Or? Sure, go ahead. You give it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, what, what, we're do, what we'll be doing today, if a vote is taken, it will be a vote to um, um, decide. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yes. Oh, we were also, is anyone who's supposed to speak, speak now? Um, I'm, I want to go through all the residents who want to speak, but I want to also make a point about the oh. process, because Ms. Frank brought up this issue of time. Um, if, if a vote is taken today, it will be a recommendation to ask the DPW to um, do a traffic study, a speed study of Cardinal Way, and that's what we would decide today. If that study is done and the information comes back, Normally our process would be to have another meeting and we would vote on whether to assign this street a, a ranking because as, as you can imagine there are many other traffic calming projects in the city, there are about two dozen actually, um, based on this information that came back. And so at that time uh, people would certainly be invited back and if it were more convenient for the neighborhood we could schedule that at, you know, after five or something like that. So. That's what we'd be doing today, and I just also wanted to say, mention that about the So, Mr. Roth, would you like to be next? Sure. Uh, I'm not on the uh, conservation committee in the city of Northampton, but I am working actively with them, and uh, we've done a lot of um, investigation into this. And, and, you're, and you're Barry Roth. Um, could you give your address to the records? It's 88 Acre Brook Drive. Okay. So um, there's a, a lot of work being done with um, state wildlife experts because of the ongoing situation uh, that exists on Cardinal Way as it impacts our wildlife. I, I'd like to point out that I, I also like to mention that I uh, agree that the problem that exists on Cardinal Way has been there since the beginning of the construction. And I'd, I'd also like to mention that uh, I myself personally, I was nearly hit by a car and I actually got into a verbal argument with a, a young teenager who was driving speeding on the street over there. So it is, it is, a, it is an issue to me as an adult who tends to walk dogs quite a bit. Um, and I, it just in general, in regards, I looked at the criteria for selecting common, street common. And I noticed that wildlife was not something that was on the list. I um, mean, I would request that that be considered, that that should be uh, something that goes into consideration of traffic conditions. And when you see the pictures that I have to show, um, I think most of, most of you will probably agree. 
Um, I first got involved with this about four years ago uh, because I started noticing all these turtles and other amphibians and reptiles being, being killed. And I went to the city council about four years ago. And uh, this was the first thing that I had seen. This was on Cardinal Way. And it was a uh, painted turtle um, in front of the sign. I actually moved it over a little bit. It was a little bit further down the road, but for purposes of conveying the point. Um, this was about four years ago. I did nothing was nothing happened. So um, when the little cameras came out on the phone, I, I was able to get a few more pictures. I mean, what I've seen there is kind of unreal, but this was one was kind of a heartbreaker. I, I, I came upon it shortly after it had been um, killed and, it was, and the blood was still wet on the ground. This was, this was a kind of, um, just so you can have some perspective, this is, again, this, that same turtle, from the perspective of the full of cardinal wood. And then, uh, then I smelled death. Uh, and I was walking along there, and I found two large, this, this picture was taken um, a year ago, and I smelled death, and I went on the lawns, and this, I found this snapping turtle that must have been 30 or 40 years old. And, um, There were others. I, I more recently, um, I have a set of pictures for you and the documentation that goes with it. Um, this is unsustainable. Uh, if it continues, there will be no more. If, 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 you, if the residents are seeing fewer turtles being killed, it's simply there are fewer turtles there. They just think, having spoken with the wildlife experts in, for the state of Massachusetts, it's unsustainable. What's more, uh, the street should never have been built as it was, as it was. So that's 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 history. But it goes against every um, protocol for construction of roads. So you don't build a road that cuts that's perpendicular to a, a wildlife corridor. This is a major wildlife corridor. So if we it's, it's a bad, I personally uh, invest a lot of time in this because I see it and it's un, it's just uh, un, you know it's terrible and and just I'll throw out this I know the issue is, is kids are, and everything but um, we worry about the more um, picture picture animals like the elephants and the chimpanzees and everything but really it comes down to um, just valuing life, and 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 these are living things in our community that we're driving to extinction. I took a picture. There's a picture in there of a spotted turtle, which was on the endangered list, who lives in that area that was recently uh, squished. You have to do what you can do within the community. So I, I, again, I ask that wildlife be when you do your considerations of road fixing and so forth, that that be in the future being uh, considered. Any, any questions, Mr. Roth? I, I have a question for you. So this is in the context of calming the speed of traffic. Are there other things that are on your mind in terms of protecting wildlife that are outside of that process? Yes, I, I, I'm presenting that one because uh, of all the um, wildlife uh, experts who have actually looked at it at this point, and there were three state experts. They've all said that if you can have the community agree to it, that's the best. That's the best outcome, because the speed bumps and common traffic will definitely be a big help. It's number two. The other one is they they need to uh, work. They, they, there are a number of, of things to be done, but as it as it impacts traffic, that's it. They have to look at the culvert. There's things. There are a number of different options. I I won't put those out because I don't want to take everyone's time. Um, would anyone else like to speak to the application?
sir. Um, my name is Stephen Barry. I live at 130 Cardinal Way. I live right about where one of these curves starts to, to uh, commence in the eight houses that make up four sides on each, uh, four houses on each side of those. When we live there are 14 children under the age of 15 who play outdoors regularly. They're running, running wild, playing football, basketball, whatever may be the case. Uh, and routinely, uh, there are many cars and construction vehicles in fact, that will make their way through the neighborhood um, at a high rate of speed, endangering these children. I moved to the area three years ago, and uh, as part of our homeowners association, my wife is a treasurer of that association, and Eric has done a great job of getting the signatures together. This has been a concern of the homeowners there for quite some time. There are uh, a few things that need to be noted. One is that this street was built very narrow. Uh, and if there's any cars parked on the side of the street, that makes it even more dangerous and takes away sight lines that need to be uh, there for, for safety purposes. Uh, two, because it's not posted, I think one of the suggested recommendations should be that we should be posting that at 20 or 25 miles an hour at the max. If we can do that on Route 66 uh, in a very wide uh, area, and post it at 25 miles an hour, to not do that on a neighborhood section uh, of the street where there are that many children is a travesty. Uh, the, the only other piece of this that, that uh, makes this very close to my heart is that I lost a child to a car accident, and I could not bear to see another child uh, go down because of the uh, inactivity of uh, this committee to put forth uh, the necessary modifications in terms of speed and speed bumps. Um, and to reiterate something that Marianne mentioned earlier about the uh, having the speed radar thing on the, on the street. It worked for a few days, but it's been out for longer than it's been there. I'm not quite sure what the reasonings are behind that, but uh, it, it certainly caught people's attention. It did get people to slow down, and I think it needs to be addressed again. So there's, there's three things that can be immediately done. Uh, but I, I would uh, absolutely uh, implore this committee to give strong consideration. I realize that there are other streets that have the same sort of things, but the uh, volume of children per capita uh, in those houses that live right in that area that are uh, actually under the age of 12 uh, is, is very large, and they're the ones that are going to suffer as a result of this. Thank you for your comments. Uh, any questions for Mr. Perry? Would anyone else like to speak to the application? Okay. Um, well, I'd like to open up to the, the commission at this point. Um, I don't know if anyone is prepared to make a motion either way, but if not, then um, I just ask the Ed, please. I'd like to speak to a couple of facts when this subdivision came through the planning board and the Department of Public Works, probably in 2005 or so. It actually came with a, a number of requests for waivers from the subdivision rules and regulations to tighten up the radius turns and have a very narrow street for traffic calming. That's why the street was built this way, with the idea and concept that cars would go slow through this new neighborhood. And that's why we let the waivers go through. And our standard was 12 foot wide uh, uh, travel lanes versus 11 foot. And I believe our radiuses were 250 foot horizontal radiuses that we cut down to 100 foot radius. That's why I had these sharp corners in there. So it was done purposely for traffic calming when we approved it back 50, 10 years ago or so, just so everyone knows that. Where's the width of the street? It uh, it's 11 foot travel lane, so it's 22 feet wide. Okay. Any other comments or thoughts? Yeah, just a question. Since the streets were put in, have we ever done any vehicle counts? Not over there, no. Officially, unofficially? Not that I'm aware. Do you see any issue in the proceeding and gathering gathering data? Not at all. Um, the only thing is that we are, just so you know, we are losing the season on it, and we still have some other streets we need to get data collected on. Understood. Just so you're aware of that. Well, if it's the commission's pleasure, someone could certainly make that motion. I'll make the motion that we proceed with the traffic analysis. Uh, as a precursor to the traffic calming assessment. Um, can we get that in, at least to the traffic counts, before winter sets in? We can try to. Okay. Uh, 
stuff. I'll make that motion. Okay. Mr. Pomerantz makes that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Harwell seconds. Okay. Any further discussion on proceeding with the traffic study? Can I make a comment? Or? Please. I, I just wanted to say that although the, the, the what is, I don't even know what, what's that called, the machine that speed trail. the speed trailer, the street mm -hmm. speed speed trailer, trailer. Yeah. is in a spot that, you know, will get people up the hill and see how fast they're going, but I feel like that's not the only piece. It really is, you know, as Stephen was saying, it's those curbs that are so bad that I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that those are the really hard spots where people are going quickly and I don't know that you I'm just afraid you're not going to necessarily get that just from the trailer so just to put that out there that okay. it's the it's those three turns that are really bad okay. so well thank you and yeah. um, could I ask our director of public works to maybe describe a little bit physically the way the data will be collected because we won't use the trailer for the data no okay. we'll, we'll actually have uh, troops put on the ground with um, uh, data collectors, they'll collect uh, speed, they'll collect classification of vehicle, and traffic volumes. We'll probably split them out there for probably a week. So a weekend and weekday data. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on this, which is would be the first step in the traffic calming process for Cardinal Way? All in favor? All right. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. And we'll be in touch with you, Councilor, and Ms. Frank. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. All right. Um, thank you. So we'll jump now to item number three, uh, which is a couple of minutes. We do not have minutes ready yet for September 15th. We have August 18th. Um, so I would accept the motion to approve the minutes of August 18th. Cool, cool. And Mr. Hartwell makes the motion. Is there a second? Seconds. Any discussion or changes to these minutes? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Great. Item number four is subcommittee updates from the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee. I'm not sure if we have any representatives from that body. Do we? Well, I was oh. there. <laughs> oh, and if I can go out of order and welcome a new commission member, Ann Brooks is joining us. It was the planning board appointed. Uh, the planning board appointed, but I'm also on that other one. I'm not uh, quite sure what of the things uh, to report on, um, but there are a number of uh, feasibility studies and other studies underway that have some money attached to them, and when, that, when those funds come in, I think there's going to be some activities that will begin to occur. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, just stay tuned uh, on that. Any questions from Ms. Brooks on subcommittee activity? Okay, thank you very much. A related item is number five, which is a report on data gathering for crosswalk, our crosswalk inventory. Um, my understanding, this is our continuing, we've had this on the agenda for about a year. Um, Director Fiden was in the process of having an intern gather information about the 600 some odd crosswalks in the city. And I understand that's ongoing. Uh, Director Fiden's not here today. Um, so I hope to circle back to the next meeting. Any comments or questions on the on this subject though today? I don't know yes, if this is sir. appropriate. Can I ask a question? Please sure. regarding crosswalks. Sure. My name is Daniel Nelski, 20 Hampton Avenue. Um, uh, I was here at your last meeting to request um, uh, a mid-block crosswalk in Hampton Avenue and there were other residents. And so since it wasn't on the agenda today, we didn't ask anybody to be here. But I, so I'm doing a little more research on mid-block crosswalks. Um, National Association of City Transit Officials, the Federal Highway Administration, and Safe Routes all have uh, information online about mid-block crosswalks. And I haven't been able to find in any case, so there's some recommendations about how to physically design them, but in none of those have I found anything that says that there's an, anything inherently dangerous about mid, mid block crosswalk. And I have heard, I guess informally, that it's city policy not to have or not to add any mid block crosswalks. So I guess my question is, um, what exactly is the rationale for that city policy? Well, 
couple things. One, I don't want to stray too far into this because it is crosswalk related, but it, it's right. not specifically what the agenda item is. And we want to, if this is a subject that the public wants to talk about, we have to post it duly and so forth. But I mean, I think we can have a simple question. Is there such a policy in the city about mid-block crosswalks? No. No formal written policy? No. Just something that we found upon that. Right. So. Okay. And I just will add, um, I hope we can be added to the agenda soon. Maybe next month. That request. About ha the Hampton Court. Correct. Had 601 crosswalks for the city. 601. <laughs> um, yeah, why don't you and I discuss okay. when the best time to. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any, anything else on the actual data gathering for this crosswalk project? Okay, we'll return to it then. Now we're at item six updates from DPW. Yeah. So, High Street Bridge currently closed. For deck repairs, they're going to be closing till coming early November, and they'll be when they're finished with the deck repair, they're going to pave that entire area, so go into the high street, street as well. The is on Bridge Street. They put in flashing beacons, so schools on flashing beacons, which have not been programmed yet. So I'm waiting on that, and rectangular rapid flashing beacons which can activate by pressing the button, which will signal the drivers that the students trying to cross the street. We're still waiting on parts from the manufacturer to get those finished. Yeah. Uh, 12 audible pedestrian buttons were installed on South, Old South, Old South, and Con Street. We have a line painting contract, and we have awarded two markings week, and we're waiting for that to continue. For traffic timing, um, on Main Street Leeds and Burlington Avenue, planning on putting in traffic cameras, I don't have to fix the date for that yet. And then on Cook Street, we're waiting for Pine Street to be finished. So that we get accurate data. Thank you. Any, any questions for traffic entry? Oh, Council? Um, hi. I, I noticed on State Street there's the, I guess the speed tracking lines. The traffic cameras? Yeah. And so can you just tell me a little bit about what, what's being, why or what's happening there? I'm not sure about State Street. Those were, might have been put in by Mass DOT oh, okay. or PDPC and then some different organizations. Okay. <laughs> Always happy to see them, just curious. <laughs> Okay, thanks. You could have taken credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the free data. Yeah. Any other questions? Did you say that there was something about the crosswalks at Old South and the, the, the crossing the lights or? I think the buttons were put in Old South. They're out of them, so you can hear them. Nice. They are sponsored by uh, CDBG money, $20,000 this year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Still got a request from Patty Sean to see. And on, uh, did you say Bridge Street or Bridge Road? Sorry, Bridge Road. Bridge Road, near JFK. Yes. Great. Any other questions? Thank you for that report. Um, we're now into item eight. Um, the first is an ordinance to amend section 285, street sidewalks and public property for the purpose of creating complete streets policy. Um, this comes upon the recommendation of the Planning Board, Office of Planning and Sustainability, and the Department of Public Works. Um, is there any interest in, in my reading this ordinance right now? <laughs> sure. Um, well, Director Fiden is not here. Um, Director Huntley, you're Department is sponsoring this. Coast we are co-sponsoring it. Uh, are you able to speak to it? Or? Wayne Feidman wrote the, the bulk of this, and we uh, concurred with it after a number of conversations. So your input is reflected? Yes. yes. Could you could you explain generally the, the purpose of a city complete streets policy? Sure. Basically, we're looking to make sure that the pedestrians, bicycles, and transit facilities are fully integrated into society, safe, and efficient transportation system. Uh, one of the first streets we're looking at right at the moment is Pleasant Street. 
and uh, we're actually doing a MassWorks uh, grant for it. And in order to be qualified for it, we do need to have a complete streets policy as part of it. MassDOT has also come up with extra funding, like Chapter 90 for roadway work, for complete streets. Uh, Maggie and I went over to Amherst to a meeting with MassDOT on that about a month and a half ago. Um, they are, it's one of their big pushes, Mass Stop pushes for complete streets so that all people have access to all streets in the city. So uh, this is an ordinance to start guiding that process. And just for clarification, so this 285-51 policy, this is new or this is expanding? This is something already on the books? Um, totally new section. It's a totally, yes, it's a totally new section. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. And it's going to be required for outside funding? For some outside funding, and also um, this is the route that cities are going to for redoing street work in the future. Yep. Any other questions, comments? Uh, this is a, a little off topic, but I, I, two things. One, I noticed that it looks like a sidewalk project happening on North King Street by the uh, Route 91 yep. ramp. Is that a city project? No, that's a mass DOT project. And it is really just adding sidewalk. It's adding sidewalk to get from Bridge Road out to Big Wife. I'm not sure if I'd want to cross the interstate off ramp. Well, I, that's yeah. kind of what I was thinking, but I think it's great. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so that ties into this question: is like, how does that come about? How does one promote that kind of thing? I, I have an acquaintance who doesn't drive, uh, and but her doctor now is out on uh, Atwood uh, Street or Lane or whatever it is by the um, old um, hotel, whatever it is, Fire Hotel, <laughs> South by Exit 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, so her options are to take a bus, which doesn't go there very often, and can actually call somebody to get there. But it's, you know, it's a long walk. You have the same sort of issues you have to cross uh, ramps. Um, and there is a, a generous uh, breakdown lane, but it's still a breakdown lane. And I, I just don't know what would happen, how it would, how it would come about that you would install a sidewalk there, and whether or not that's even a reasonable thing, but here's this new facility which has a lot of offices that kind of has a public uh, connection, big medical offices. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just a question that I, you know, I don't, don't have the answer for. If it's state level, it needs to go through Mass DOT yeah. as a project. Right. So right now we're actually trying to take over a section of Pleasant Street and make it a city street up to Hockman Road. Right. And first phase and the roundabout's coming open bids on it. Um, that would be probably constructed next year at this point. Right. When that's done, I accept the, the corridor from the bowling alley all the way into the city will be all city layout. Right. And and there is, is there sidewalks going that far right now? There are sidewalks way? going on one side of the <coughs> at least. On one side at least. And I think the other one stops at the bank. Yeah. I, I want to pull this conversation back to the actual ordinance. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. I don't know. I know. Uh, I don't know. Ms. Brooks, did you? No, I was just going to say something about that. It's fine. Okay. Um, we can definitely return to that later. Any other questions about the ordinance itself? How much of this is just our, our subdivision regulations that we're taking and sort of grafting onto public public ways? Seems like a lot of this. In fact, some of the things that you mentioned during our discussion of Cardinal Way, like 10 to 11 feet wide lane widths and. Um, small curb radiuses. A lot of it does come out of the subdivision rules and regulations, but you know, the big focus is to ensure that you know sidewalks are, are constructed on all new streets and reconstructed streets, mm -hmm. which in the past DBW did projects that didn't provide that connectivity. So this is forcing the issue to for our future projects. If there's a private way that becomes public, and the private way was not designed according to subdivision regulations with sidewalks and that kind of thing. Do you think this ordinance would compel us to um, install sidewalks? If there was a need and a demand, some of the private ways that we converted had two houses on it, right. three houses on it. Right, exactly. Some of them look and felt like subdivision states. Right. 
Yeah, there's some, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, it's a policy. These are statements of kind of, these are aspirational statements that are enumerated. It's kind of interesting that it's an ordinance that we're using to put those on the books. Um, there's no real sentence in here, in here that says, this person shall do this or shall not do that, which you normally find in an ordinance. But. So one of the department's biggest concerns on this was the level of funding that was going to take away from other projects. Mm -hmm. By doing complete streets, they become very, com very competitive with the money as to what gets done. <coughs> so that was my biggest concern, is that obviously we're on a big capital campaign right now, paving operations and uh, what we've done in the past two years, and um, I'm not sure where the money's going to come from be able to do complete streets. But also, if this is something that the city council is going to ultimately enact, or not enact, but say it enacts it, I'm not sure what the power the city council has to tell your department how to spend money, mm -hmm. except through the regular budget and capital process. But I guess that's sort of a legal question for the ordinance committee and the other bodies that will review this. Anyway, so I want to Sorry to kind of whip a dead horse here, but I am curious about the, uh, in uh, paragraph B, line 9, it says, prioritize retrofitting streets to add sidewalks to all streets within one mile of all public schools in downtown Northampton. So I'm curious about the definition of downtown Northampton. Would that be the edge of a zone, or would it be a, a point? I can only the imagine that he was referring to the central business district. So do you think it would be from the perimeter of that district, or do you think it would be a point? Because obviously that may drive some of that. I don't know. Is that not also, is that not also uh, business Florence as well? It is in the planning document. Right, there is downtown Florence business then That would be, con that's consistent with the planning document. Are, are you hoping to amend that? change it to central business, no, we certainly could. I'm, I'm just curious, I'm sort of imagining like how, it, so you had a citizen, and that citizen uh, grew into a group of citizens. How would they go about um, advocating, advocating for a sidewalk in an area that didn't exactly fit some criteria, or maybe it does if the criteria were more clearly defined? That's all I'm really asking, it's not. And this is, this is prioritized, so. Doesn't mean you couldn't do it elsewhere. As yeah. well. And I, I think the funding would always be, uh, you know, ultimately that would be the probably the most difficult part of this. You might philosophically agree to every, all of this and gets approved, but it needs to be funded. And that's always a hard part. Yeah, I'm, I'm frankly not sure how that works. Why did it make sense? Well, this until Director Fiden is here for. Assuming next month's meeting, we can get some clarification on some of these topics and anything else that comes up in the intro. It's fine with me. I know because it sort of helps us qualify for state money. I know Wayne wanted to get this moving, so I offered to bring it up today, even though he was not going to be here. But but yeah, if we're not ready to take action on it, then we should take action. That's certainly fine with me. So. <coughs> What's the, what's the pleasure of the, of the commission? Are we ready to vote on this today? Do people feel like we could endorse the pie? I am. Okay. I've been through this with Wayne enough times that okay. but I don't know how to announce this. Okay. And Ms. Brooks, you have, is the yeah. planning board representative? Yeah, no, I, I've consistently. Okay. Could you speak to some of the discussion? Well, you know, the the, the, this all has to do with, I mean, it has to do with getting money. There's no doubt about that. But it also has to do with making the town accessible by bicycle, by by uh, by walking. The kind of street discussion that we were having um, a little bit earlier had, that relates in part to the individual you were talking about where the all those uh, doctor's offices are out there. We are going to have a lot of people who may or may not have automobiles living in, on Pleasant Street, and that's in part so that they can get to places like the doctor's offices. I mean, sure. these are policies in place to be able to have some leverage with people who are changing land use at the edges so that we get those kinds of things um, as development occurs or reoccurs. 
Um, and so there's a good deal of trying to make the streets more than just automobile streets. I, I get For that. cuts that are appropriate in the right places, yes. bicycle crossings that are not dangerous but um, uh, are obvious and, and all, uh, allow that extension to the extent that there's money to pay for it, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you. I mean, again, I don't, this is kind of a strange ordinance in my opinion, but to the, to, to the extent that the Transportation and Parking Commission has anything to do with it, I mean, we're sort of just endorsing its intent. And it's things like safely accommodate pedestrians, encourage alternatives to single occupancy vehicles, you know, encourage sidewalks, calm traffic, and I, I think those are all pretty safe, safe things that we endorse. Whether it, I, don't, I don't know what the ultimate form of this document will be, but I mean, I mean I, I'm comfortable endorsing those general ideas. But if the commission wants to wait, have questions answered, I'll see if they're out there. So, so I'll just. Wait for a motion either to you can continue it to the next meeting or someone can move approval. And then based on the motion, we can have a debate and decide. I'd like to move that we approve this as an ordinance. Okay. Mr. Hartwell moves to make a positive recommendation. Yes. Uh, is there a second? Second. Director Huntley seconds. Discussion on the recommendation. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. Okay, we're good, thank you. Now we're on to item nine, um, which is another ordinance brought to us by a traffic engineer in the DPW to amend section 312.46, designation of parking spaces, uh, relative to parking space markings for handicapped handicap parking spaces. And what this will do will be to add a sentence to that section of the code. Um, Many, there are many semicolons here. I was just going to read the last <laughs> sentence, but this whole thing is one sentence. So, um, basically, it says parking space spaces designated under these provisions, the handicapped parking provisions, will be identified through various means and shall be 12 feet wide and two feet, two eight foot wide areas within four feet of crosshatch, except, um, excuse me, let me say that again. It shall be 12 feet wide or two eight foot wide areas with four feet of crosshatch between them. And then the new language is except at parallel parking locations and shall be designated with the international symbol of accessibility and parking space marking. So, in other words, we don't need to put the crosshatch when the car is like this because you're in the street. Yeah, right. Okay. And that all of the accessible parking spaces have that painted marking. Um, is there a motion on this to make a positive recommendation? Sure. Make a motion to accept. Okay. Mr. Pines, what's the motion? Mr. Mr. Hartwell seconds. Positive recommendation. Any other discussion on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Great. Thank you. Um, item number 10 is another ordinance to amend section 312.117, schedule 16, on street and off street handicapped parking spaces. Is for the purpose of changing the location of a handicapped parking space on Keys Street. Um, and it would change from Keys Street westerly from the current language is the second space southerly from Depot Avenue, and there's a map here um, that our traffic engineer has helpfully provided. And the new language would be the first space northerly from Main Street, Florence. So essentially we're moving it from one side to the other. It's already there. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> you guys always do that. It's been there for years. <laughs> oh, really? This is correcting it. Oh, well, bring us into conformance with reality. Is there a motion on this for positive recommendation? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Ms. Brooks makes a motion and then the chief seconds. Any further discussion on conforming with the way things actually are? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, item number 11 is an ordinance you're familiar with to amend section 312.31 for the purpose of prohibiting parking in municipal parking lots during a snow emergency during certain hours. Um, we've discussed this in the past, and that was some confusion, but I understand the city had its annual snow preparation meeting, and we may be more comfortable with it now than before. Um, and 
Director Huntley, I'm wondering if you want to offer any comments on this. No, the big issue we have is we can't plug a lot when we have these long-term cars there. We have some dairy cars in the past year. Right. So they need to move during these snow emergencies. They just can't be stored for pretty long periods of time. The zip cars are in municipal parking places. Right, yes. Yeah, right. How do you deal with that? Well, <laughs> if you're trying to, I mean, who would be responsible for moving them, I guess, is my question. Good question. I guess the next customer. <laughs> yeah. The city Not really, so there are cards that you use to access the zip cards, and you reserve them online. Yeah. Uh, and my understanding is the city, we don't have them, Central Services doesn't. I know Clinton Wayne doesn't have any. Uh, last year we did have the zip card company come up at some point <coughs> to do some shoveling. They had a flat tire they had to fix. Uh, it's really their responsibility. So in other words, the company with this, the co someone has to come there, there from the a company. There was that came up from Connecticut, I think. <laughs> <laughs> However, the reality of that was that the person who was next in line to get the car uh -huh. would show up with a shovel and do a really whatever job, just enough to get the car out of there and leave oh, mounds mm -hmm. of snow all over the place. Uh, so it, it's a, a, a messy situation over there because, you know, when they come in to plow, they're there. Yeah. And then afterwards, they just get enough snow out of the way there. I guess the other other point of concern would be the Union Station lot in Sheldon Field and the mm -hmm. parking rides where you might have your car there yes. for multiple days. And then it snows and then your car is at wherever when you get back. So I don't know if there's a solution to that. I also spoke to Lynn Simmons, the mayor's chief of staff today, and she suggested maybe in places like Sheldon Field, we could have flashing blue light at some point if we were to, to do this the way you have another license. Um, I guess we just have to weigh the downsides of doing yeah, the this. Problem, Sheldon, you, I mean, you have the car parked there three days before a storm. Yeah, right. You put on the blue lights and he's somewhere, mm -hmm. she's somewhere, mm -hmm. and coming back in two or three days from a train trip and there's another car. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the risk you take. <coughs> Is there, is there a place that you can designate people to park if they're going to leave? Instead of giving them the entire lot, can you say if you're going to leave your car for 24 to 40 hours, it has to be in these seven spots that are that you know that well, yeah, just plow around those? I don't think it was ever the city's attention to offer long-term oh. parking like that, a week or two at a time of it, taking a trip. We're looking at it as far as station line, there's an Amtrak traffic, but we're, we're not there yet. Right. Because we did just pass an ordinance to eliminate the 24-hour limit. So in fact, we did sort of just send a message that you can park in municipal lots from moving on down. <laughs> However, with, with the ordinance for winter parking and snow emergencies and parking bags, I mean, that trumps that. Um, well, I mean, I, I just don't know, well, like I said, I think we have to weigh the downsides of doing this. If there were no downsides, I'm sure we could prohibit parking during the snow emergency in, in municipal lots, but I don't know. I actually think it's, it is an interesting idea to designate a certain part. Like, could we have, if there's five spaces in the corner, does that prevent, and there's people park, park, parking there when there's a big snowstorm, does that prevent plowing the, the lot? To an extent. To an extent. Because initially they're pushing the snow off to the perimeter. So they're going to push it right onto those cars. Yeah. Could you pick the middle of the lot? Sure. Maybe not, you know, pick a designated spot that's the least inconvenient for you guys to plow? Um, just yeah. You better 
park your car here, it's going to get buried if we get a space. There's always the how do we do it in other places question. Right. Road trip to Buffalo? Coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from Buffalo. I've lived in Buffalo say. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm Or the weekend or three or four days just to avoid that situation. Okay. Well, does anyone want to make a motion to approve this underway? I'd like to make a motion okay. to approve this ordinance as written. Okay. Is there a second? We'll fail without a second. Sure. I'm not. I'm not looking at you to influence your ass. Move this along. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a resounding endorsement. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> but now we don't know what the outcome of the vote is. So, any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll be opposed. And Ms. Brooks opposed. And. Substantial. Um, two, two of those. So, so that's a positive recommendation. Um, very good. Item number twelve is um, follow up on the traffic calming ranking criteria and possible removal of the CDDG related criterion. I did speak to Peg Keller um, and. She told me what Director Huntley has told me, which is this information is um, difficult to obtain in, in a way that is you know, useful. So she actually recommended we did remove the. All right. It's a very small. That's one point. So I, I, I accept the motion to recommend to removing recommend to remove the. One point CDBG criteria on the traffic calming ranking policy. So we want to move that. Ms. Brooks makes that motion. Second. Yes, sir. Okay, the chief seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Are you opposed? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. okay. I'm just slow on the draw, that's all. Okay. Great. Uh, final item is follow up on, on tracking traffic calming funds. I know we brought this up previously. I'm trying to remember yeah. what we meant, but I think you might. Have. Sure. I can tell you what I know about it. I can't tell you what Wayne has for traffic mitigation funds, though, because that's a different account. But through the, right. capital, through the capital improvements plan of the past few years, we actually have um, $85,000 program for traffic calming, um, traffic calming applications uh, that can be used on any of the ones that are still not completed at this point, once we come up with what we want to do with them. And then we reprogrammed $40,000 from a few years ago for uh, sidewalks. It was actually for designing sidewalks in the city with the big push from the Transportation Parking Commission back in 2005, I think it was, to really expand our network of uh, sidewalks. And I was looking at, we're trying to get prices together from VHB to do a sidewalk inventory so I was leaning towards using that reprogram money, that $40,000, towards that inventory so that we come through the capital plan for our sidewalks going forward. So that's where we're at. We really have $85,000 for traffic coming. Okay. So any question? Can you explain on the, when somebody submits a traffic comment, say like Lincoln, we've heard from Lincoln about it several times. <laughs> What's the initial cost for us to go out and do that? Is there, I mean, there has to be an initial cost. There is, there's equipment and labor. What's the date? An hour set the commerce? Yeah? <laughs> like 500, 1,000? I'm just curious, you know, somebody said, wouldn't you do well, a track? Look, look at our wages. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if it was a consultant, it'd be a different story. Right, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine that's costing more than with materials and labor, probably five to six hundred dollars to do the initial comments. Just puts it in perspective. I've had people say, "Why don't you just do them on a lot of streets?" I'm like, "Well, it must cost us something to do it." I, you know, I have no idea. 
what it costs. But yeah, yeah so we've, we've bought uh, four traffic counters over the past um, five or six years, and if I recall right, they're in the uh, two or three thousand dollar range each. So there's and there's tubing that gets destroyed on roadways. So there's miscellaneous expenses right. here to tape that can't be retrieved and stick it down. And as you said before, it takes it takes really a, a week, right? So somebody sets it up, sits there for a week, you bring it back in, right. and then somebody has to massage it down. Yeah, that. Yeah. And then so part of it. You could only do so many a year based on that time criteria. Right. And as soon as the weather gets cold, the, the tubes don't work because they get frozen, mm -hmm. so they don't record. So we're kind of ending the season right now on traffic count, just so you're aware of that. And then of some of your budget obviously relates to the solution of the traffic calming study. That's your salary. That's your salary. That's your salary. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so, so that, okay, so like if speed bumps are a recommendation, that comes out of the budget you just spoke about, or? It could, yes, it could come out of the capital improvements budget of the 85000 if that was the end result of Pelgos and construction. Great, anything else on this side? All right, thank you very much. Uh, any new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Motion, second. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.